Hello and welcome to yet another edition of the Spotlight, bringing to you a story that ignites change. And we meet again on yet another Monday evening with a similar story. Now, Sri Lanka's economy and Sri Lanka's export industry plays a vital role in the economical aspect of the country by contributing significantly to its foreign exchange earnings and employment. So today I have with me Mr. Shia Marika, the Secretary General and CEO of the National Chamber of Exporters, Sri Lanka. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me on board. So first things first, what is the export industry looking like this year? What is uh, a, a general overview that you could provide us with? Well, uh, Sri Lankan exports, if you look at it, analyze it during the past 10 or 15 years, sadly has been stagnant. Uh, we are seeing export revenue in the range of 12 to 13 billion US dollars. That has been the case for the past many years. Even the central bank in their reports are mentioning this. So there is a lot of work we need to do. And uh, we, are, we have to look at the exporters as a group of resilient people because as you know they survived a 35 year old war they went through the tsunami then the easter bombing the covid but yet they are somehow sustaining their businesses which means they are providing jobs their factories operating but sadly for the country where we are looking at increasing the export revenue we don't see that happening so there are many reasons for that uh, we can point the fingers at many directions, but I think as a whole, all of us need to look at things new, think out of the box, and hopefully introduce some new policies that would give us an increase to our export revenue. Definitely. So, I think a lot of people don't really understand the importance of the, the export uh, sector. In your opinion, how how what is the role of this in the economy? What role does it play to facilitate uh, the economic boost that we need? Well, I think if you look at the previous governments that came in, everybody was talking about making Sri Lanka an export-driven economy. But again, sadly, the policies that were introduced or not introduced, it was not working well. That's why this stagnation. And yes, exports is utmost important for, for our country because we need the foreign currency. If you look at the foreign currency earnings coming into the coming into the country, first is exports around 12 to 13 billion dollars, followed by tourism. We see the tourism sector also growing. That's a, that's that's a good thing. Then we have the remittance that is coming from the uh, overseas or the foreign workers, but still export is right on the top. And there are a lot of avenues where we can double this number. We can go to a 20 billion uh, export economy uh, if we focus properly and work. The talent is there. We have the products here in the country, uh, but there are many sectors that needs to be uh, looked at. Now, if you look at the Sri Lankan export basket, out of the 13 billion, almost half of that is coming from the apparel industry, right? Followed by the tea sector, then the rubber sector, which is reaching almost a billion dollar industry. Hopefully, it will become a billion dollar and start going over that. But what about the other sectors? What's happening to our fisheries sector? spice and cinnamon you know these are areas which we need to look into so we have the talent we have the product we have the raw materials we need to just give some sort of a uh, support to the exporters community in terms of long-term steady policies and surely since they have been resilient going through all these difficulties with the proper support given by the government or national level support i'm sure they can double this target now, in September 2024, just a month ago, Sri Lanka decided uh, what the next five years would look like with our new president, uh, President Anurakumar Sanayaka, coming into power. This current government is very focused on recovering the economy and is uh, driven to boost the economy. So, with the National uh, Chamber of Exporters, Sri Lanka, what is the view like? What is the collaboration here with the present government to boost yeah. uh, the export sector? Well, we, we are a private sector chamber. We have around 600 members covering almost all the products and service sectors from the MSME to the extra large. And we are not affiliated to any political party. We work with whoever the government and any government who comes into power, they, they have to support the exporters. Now, just before these presidential elections, uh, we invited 
all the presidential candidates for meetings. We, uh, they came on board, they met with our members, they explained, they discussed what are their policies, that their policies are going to be in terms of supporting the exporters. And we also as a chamber, after careful study, after doing a lot of surveys from our members, different sectors, we put together a paper with a 14-point policy document where we handed over this to all the presidential candidates, including the elected president. And I think the exporters community feels positive that something is going to happen. And uh, we, we actually see that positive vibe coming in. But it's too early now. We are talking about the general elections. So I think we'll have to wait till then. Even the ministries are not yet, you know, aligned. That's, they are not appointed. It's a very small cabinet. So I think we'll have to wait till uh, the general elections happen. After that, uh, exports will come under a particular ministry and we are very focusedly watching who the minister is going to be, who the secretary of that ministry is going to be, uh, because it's very important that we get a ministry and a team of people who are highly competent, because we are yeah. talking about a stagnant export uh, uh, you know, revenue for the past many years, so there are a lot of change needed, mm -hmm. out of the box thinking is needed new policies, long-term policies, not policies that will change when the government changes. So there are, there are a lot of work to do, but it's possible now, even the policy paper that we have given, it's based on ground level issues that we spoke and understood. So these policies are made based on that to overcome those. Mm. So if these are introduced, yes, we could see increase in exports. So to answer your question, yes, we feel positive that the present government, uh, they have given us the assurance that they will take our policy paper very seriously mm -hmm. and we are working with them very closely and we are hoping for the best. So, so far, how have uh, government stakeholders, how have they been supporting uh, the export industry because it is a collaborative effort, it is team effort that comes into place, not just a one-way uh, stream that we are looking at. So, so far with the governments that you have been working with, and uh, with the current government that we are all currently working with. What do you sort of foresee for the future? See, when you talk about exports, there are many government agencies that play their role. Yes. So, talking from the customs, the Inland Revenue Department, the ministry, even the health ministry, the forest ministry, you know, all the horticulture products, the, the fisheries ministry. There are a lot of approvals that exporter needs to get. So we have found out that while there are many who work very hard, very efficiently, who are competent on their subject, at the same time there are many who are not at all aware of what's happening. So these, these kind of issues makes an exporter even frustrated. They have to go through so many difficulties, a lot of red tapes are there, bureaucracy. So these are the policies that we have actually, we are asking the present government to change because uh, we are talking about something like a one-stop shop for the for exporter. If you take other countries, even countries like Singapore, Malaysia, they have a one-stop shop. But here in Sri Lanka, exporter has to go, it, go to many doors and windows to get approvals. Mm. And that leads to a lot of, you know, corruption, uh, wastage happens, all these are cost to an exporter. Time is money for them. Right. So we are trying to lobby on this single window concept. And to answer your question, yes, there are many individuals working in these organizations or state organizations who help the exporters. At the same time, there are many who are not even aware of the subject, so that makes things more difficult. Right. So now the rising costs, both domestically and globally, have are a major concern for many exporters if we come into conversation with many. Now, has the cost of production in Sri Lanka, has it increased significantly and how are exporters sort of coping with these uh, changes financially? Yes. This is a huge challenge for the Sri Lankan exporter. The cost of doing business has increased. When you talk about the energy cost that has increased, the labor cost has increased a lot. And of course, shortage of labor is another problem. And more than all these things, other costs that are related to delays, related to corruption, these are also adding to their cost. Keeping in mind the Sri Lankan exporters, they are presently working on very, very thin margins because they cannot increase their price. They have long-term contracts with their buyers, so they can't suddenly increase the price when the energy price increases in Sri Lanka. And at the moment, 
we are losing our competitive advantage because our neighboring countries they produce with economies of scale their costs are down their qualities are increasing they are using technology upgrades we are still stagnant in these areas what do you think is uh, the main reason for this no, that's what now that's what i said even though the governments are talking about the export driven economy we don't see that push coming from the top in terms of policies yeah. and we see policies changing now you know last time they brought in this fertilizer matter came up and the tea exporters lost there so these kind of ad hoc policies come into play sometimes these policies are introduced without consultation with the private sector chambers so we are always telling the government before you introduce a policy that has some sort of uh, relation to trade or exports to consult the private sector especially chambers like us because we work hand in hand with our members we know the ground level issues they are facing so we can yeah. contribute a lot but it doesn't happen like that you know sometimes an exporter goes to a particular ministry to get a approval suddenly he realizes there's a new policy paper or new paper that has come in so he has yeah. to go back do his things again go back again so these kind of delays are leading a lot of frustration mm. so long term steady policies is very very important for the sri lankan exporter and that also has a big impact on the cost of his production right now it's also important that uh, this is a global conversation and a spark of conversations that we see that we need women in the industry uh, in terms of the export industry are we seeing a significant number of women entering the scene or is there more to be done well yes and no now if you take the apparel sector of course there are a lot of women working in factories and so on but if you look at the senior level we don't see that much of women for example there is not many women owned export enterprises in sri lanka you get only few right. and also in senior positions even in our own member companies when we do our surveys you know we always advocate gender balance but we don't see that much of women working in senior positions now there are many reasons for that now we as a chamber we have given some proposals to the ministry of uh, labor in terms of amending the labor law to suit or to solve these problems you know like i don't i think a ceo when he is interviewing a, a female he may not be motivated to do that because you know maternity leave is there these all cost for him so in if you look at other countries they have state funded maternity benefits given to this stuff so they hire them there is no uh, impact to the company so there should be some policies introduced in terms of amending the labor law that will encourage and motivate companies to hire more female workers yeah and even if you look at the female workforce if you look at the education we have we see more females passing out you know they are in their studies i mean they are they are degrees and higher higher studies there are more females coming out today so where are they going we can use those those all assets to our country so i think uh, looking at that issue we need to have more uh, amendments into the labor law that will encourage the sri lankan companies or enterprises to recruit or employ more female you know you actually right because as you mentioned we see as you rightly said a lot of people pass out as graduates but where are they going yes, but i think many know the answer that is they go overseas they yes. say we are looking for greener pastures but i think we also need uh, the youth coming into the industry so what do you have to say do you uh strongly say stay back in the country and do what you have to do or no well you can't blame the youth today for leaving the country they have valid reasons to go they are nothing to do here right and uh, that's what i'm saying we need to start from our education level when they pass off from school or university are they suitable to work in export oriented company or any other organization why aren't they recruiting them so there's a lot of changes need in terms of setting their mind you know to come into a private sector company because when you come to the private sector the whole game is different on the other hand many wants to go and join a state sector maybe is it because of the pension that they will get or is it because of the reason that they may not have that much of work to do there so i think there should be a program and i did notice the present prime minister talking about making some amendments to our education system Uh, so that you know the young people can be groomed to take up this new challenging positions because now the need is completely different it's not like before 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, just a, just a degree or a MBA will not do. There are a lot of other things a person has to go through to fit into the present private sector environment. So these are challenges, but it can be done. You know, state supported program should has, has to be has to come in, introduced, so that everybody will fall into that. What else do you think? What do you think? What more can we do to ensure that? Uh, we sort of keep our youth with us instead of them having to leave. I mean, we do understand that at a certain point of time they are looking for career stability and financial independence. But uh, I think we can do more to give them reasons to stay. Well, I think uh, the main reason is the economy of the country. Everybody measures their future with that. and. Uh, after COVID, we had big problems. We had, uh, I mean, COVID itself gave a huge uh, impact to the country. Then, of course, we had the, you know, the political crisis. We had the economic crisis. We have a huge debt we need to pay. And uh, I think this is what the young people are looking at. They were not having confidence that, you know, that Sri Lanka can come out of this. So this is where that confidence has to come from the leadership. Political leadership has to assure that they are serious. Today, when we look at look at Sri Lanka, people are talking about corruption. They are talking about wastage. We are we, we are seeing the poor people becoming more poor, while the elite rich people are making more money. That is fine, but uh, there should be a program, and it's all about the confidence. Even as a parent, what do we look at our children's future? Are they suitable? I mean, can they? I mean, today our children now they could be highly educated, they could be highly talented. But do you think there is something in Sri Lanka that they can, you know, really look forward to? So I think we can't blame them from going overseas. We need to make sure that the system here is, has that credibility-wise, they, they, can, they can show these young people, there is something for you. Stay here, you will be very well taken care of. Mm -hmm. So this sort of message should come from the whole, all of us. Yeah. Not only the politicians, even the industries, we all have to show that you have a future here. Stay here. But right now we are seeing uh, some positive changes coming, so definitely we are hoping for the best uh, in that arena. Now, moving on to another aspect that is greatly spoken about is, as you mentioned, is corruption, uh, transparency in terms of financial transactions. And so a term that we closely associate uh, to all of this is digitalization. Yes. Now, the digital transformation is honestly reshaping everything worldwide. Is this impacting uh, the export industry in Sri Lanka? Exporters for, um, for, for the past many years have been crying to make their make many processes digital. When you talk about corruption, it's a fact. There's a lot of corruption going on at various places, state, even, even the private sector. In the, we are also now used to giving money to get things done. So all of our mindset has to change. It has to come from the top. Somebody from the top has to say, we will not allow corruption in Sri Lanka. And to do that, getting things onto a digital platform is the solution. Especially when we talk agencies like the customs, in and around the department, mm -hmm. other stakeholders where they issue you know, approvals and certifications, these could be digitalized. If you look at our neighboring countries, they are digitalized. But Sadly, they are not coming on board for various reasons. Could be because of corruption. So, going digital, making the processes digital, that will eliminate corruption to a very huge extent. And it will also save money for the exporter. And definitely. Yes, yes. So, going digital is, will be the answer to, for the future. I think this is something, if you talk to any businessman today and you ask them, they will say, yes, we need to convert our processes into a digital platform. That mm -hmm. makes things easy for everyone. The National Chamber of Exporters in Sri Lanka, you also mentioned that you all had proposed uh, a proposal, given a, you, you all had given a proposal to, paper, yes. Yes, to the president. Was digitalization a part of the proposal? Of course, yes, yes. That was one of the focus points here. And I think uh, if you had listened to the presidential candidates before the election when they were talking about the economic policies all of them had their policy one of the policies was to make a digital platform create everything make everything digital this was there and the the elected president now he so he also very strongly believes that to curb corruption make things more efficient make things more fast save money save cost reduce wastage 
that we have to look at digital platforms in many things we do. Well, we're hoping for the best in that arena because when you digitalize something, it makes things completely transparent as for both sides, of for course, both parties. Yes, so I think right. going in the long run, that is what we need. It saves time and energy because as we all know, you know, getting things done in Sri Lanka is quite a tedious of task. Yes, yes. You have to, if you have to get something done, you have to sometimes take an entire day off. Uh, to get processes completed. Now, FDIs, that is foreign direct investments, these play a critical um, role in expanding export opportunities. Are we currently attracting significant FDIs, uh, investments into Sri Lanka that can bolster uh, the export industries and what sectors are showing the most amount of potential? Well, with regards to foreign direct investment coming into the country, we do see some you know, foreign investments coming, but not from the big players. Now, I think when we were facing the COVID, uh, there were a lot of businesses moving out from China. We miss the bus. Countries like Indonesia, they grab them. I think in Sri Lanka, we have too much of red tape, too much of bureaucracy. If you have noticed recently, about a week ago, we saw the Japanese and the Koreans want to come back now. I think I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to see that the government has cleared all these things. They have given a lot of assurance, built up confidence and credibility. So they are now coming back. So many projects, we are talking of 10, 15 projects, I think they announced. They want to come back to Sri Lanka. So why weren't they allowed to come during the previous years? There were some FDIs coming in, but we need more. That is, the, that is a very key area where Sri Lanka should focus. And I think, you know, Sri Lanka considering our geographical location, considering the skills of our people, even our weather, the raw materials available in Sri Lanka, there will be many who will want to come and invest here in factories, set up factories here and re-export. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we need to do very much more in terms of attracting foreign direct investment. Now we have the BOI, they were doing a reasonably a good job but not enough looking at our neighboring countries, how they attract, how they go after, bring them in. We have, I think we have failed in that area. But now we see, like I said, the Japanese and the Koreans who are trying to come in. And hopefully, you know, that will set a good trend. Example, the news will go out and there will be more investments coming in. So we have to be positive here. That's right. You said that uh, you don't see some of the major uh, players or the FDI is uh, sort of taking that leap of faith with Sri Lanka. Is that a trust issue coming there or yeah, is there any particular reason? Yes, so when we, when we talk about a foreign investor or a big brand, overseas brand, want to come to Sri Lanka, they will look at many things because they are, they are going to invest money here. Right. So first of all, our economy should be stable. Uh, stable. Uh, our, 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 our political arena should be stable. And, uh, you know, when you see riots happening everywhere, uh, then what do you call this? I'll say in single, that polymer, this polymer, you know, these things today, even though these are happening inside the country, through social media, these news goes to the international arena. People right. are watching these things. When That's they true. see this, of course, they will not want to invest. Mm. So we need to get these things in. We need to get our house in order. Then they will come. That is my view of that brilliantly said. So it's time we head into our first break this evening. Uh, remain with us and we will be back. Welcome back to the show and we are talking about the intricacies of the export industry here in Sri Lanka. Now, uh, we are in conversation with uh, Mr. Shiham Marikar, uh, the Secretary General of the National Chamber of Exporters here in Sri Lanka. So now, what kind of assistance do exporters receive from Sri Lankan missions overseas and how can these missions better promote Sri Lankan products? Well, uh, we do work very closely with uh, many Sri Lankan missions overseas. There are around, I think, 50 or 52. And in most of these missions, there is a trade officer. This officer is appointed either from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or the Department of Commerce. And the support that we get from them is very important. But sadly, not all Sri Lankan missions 
are supporting the export industry and we have experienced this uh, when we work with them now there are some countries of course i mean we do take overseas delegations about 10 15 exporters to a group we go to these countries and we have b2b meetings we work with the uh, chambers in those countries introduce our members to their members a lot of b2b activities we do around 6 to 8 overseas delegations every year and all these events are supported or coordinated by the sri lankan missions in those particular countries but the support we are getting i am I, i don't think we can say that's really satisfactory lot more could be done and uh, we have been talking to the foreign ministry to have a very simple mechanism where they can introduce a again digital online platform where all 52 sri lankan missions have to provide update on a monthly basis what they are doing to support trade bilateral trade nothing like this has happened we have been telling this again and again we have written to them we have gone to the media about it it's a very simple thing have a online portal where everybody reports there on a monthly basis and we even told them if a particular country the officers they have not done anything they must write there no update so that will create a healthy competition among them so sadly now these are the things we need to introduce we need to hold people accountable because if you talk about a foreign office overseas that's also maintained by the taxpayers money and that's right they, one of the key things they need to do is to support bilateral trade mm-hmm. so while there are many countries where sri lankan officers are being very helpful they are highly qualified competent they go they think out of the box they connect buyers with our members but sadly there are many on the other hand who are not doing their task uh, you know up to up to the requirements so we need to look at that uh, also and uh, make some you know corrections there definitely now the national chamber of exporters in sri lanka what sort of work do you all do to facilitate and to support and take the export industry forward yeah well uh, our our main area of work is to work with our members understand the issues that they face and to lobby on their behalf with all the stakeholders mm. you know government state private sector and the public sector and we have a council that meets every month uh, where we discuss these issues and as and which the secretary which is headed by me we we follow up on those like lobbying and you know find trying to find solutions on the other hand we also uh, sort of uh, reward ex- sri lankan exporters on their performance on an annual basis through our program called the nce export awards uh, this is an annual event and this time also we are having it in december we are the leading exporters covering almost all the products and service sectors uh, based on a very strict evaluation process uh you know through application lot of documentation and it is overlooked by the world renowned uh, ey anas and young and uh, we give gold silver bronze awards so this is something which motivates and encourages the sri lankan exporters other than that we have also understood the importance of ethical trading so we have introduced our own certificate of ethical trading which is a exclusive service to our members where we encourage them to uh practice ethical trading and good governance because when you look at the consumers today in the european air market they are very conscious of where the what the product is you know who what is the company producing this product that company's history and so simple things you know like no child labor minimum wages gender balance environment the environment uh, you know pollution or protection so there are 10 criteria an exporter has to fulfill to obtain the certificate and that this certificate is a very useful certificate for the exporter because this is what they go and show the buyers right. and the buyer doesn't mind paying that extra dollar to work with a company or exporter who can prove that they are following ethical practices mm-hmm. so these are there are many programs like that that we do apart from our training programs capacity building programs we do a lot of seminars and workshop but the overall thing is to help our exporters in uh, you know solving the issues daily issues that they face mm-hmm. now sri lanka is also well known for its traditional exports like tea uh, rubber coconut products and we also produce over 70% of the world's cinnamon from sri lanka yes. so that is a lot to speak about and we have a lot to offer as a country yeah. but i would like to ask you what can we do more to encourage uh, exporters to focus more on value addition in these uh, traditional sectors yes so if you look at the sri lankan export basket that also has become stagnant 
that is one of the reasons why our export is export is not going to the next level now here like you said yes value addition innovation these are the things our exporters have to look into now we have been lobbying with the government asking them to introduce uh, incentive for companies who are engaged in r&d that is research and development so you are engaged in r&d to innovate new products add value uh, sadly that is also not happening at the levels that we want so for us to be competitive and to get that go into that niche market we need to keep on adding value to our products so there are a lot of you could say the the level of value addition or new products coming into our product basket is very low and here also there are a lot of work to be done and uh, some of the policies that we have given to the government looks at these areas also mm-hmm. but is there a willingness to sort of diversify the exporters portfolio or do we see the recurring phases of exporters in the industry usually yes it's it has been the same export i think there are around 1500 or 2000 exporters in sri lanka out of that toss if you look at the regular exporters the numbers are low so we don't see any new exporters coming on board here also i want to highlight as a chamber we have a program called the aspiring exporters program where we identify individuals startup companies we get them on board train them encourage them motivate them to become leading exporters mm-hmm. but through a national level there should be a program to encourage young people to think of exports as a career because we need more exporters in sri lanka that's right now exporters are sort of facing as you say many challenges today but what are some of the common hurdles that our sri lankan exporters face uh, while being in the industry well the issues that are faced by the exporters are many uh, like i explained earlier we don't have a digital platform for exporters to do business we don't have a single window for exporter to get his you know export orders processed very fast the level of frustration among the exporters is increasing and we have also seen some of them closing shop and opening their offices overseas this is very bad news why is that well due to all these reasons i mean they don't have confidence that things will change here so we need to see right from the top somebody beckoning saying that we are going to make changes we are going to make a level playing field for you we are going to clear out all these red tapes we are going to support you the talent is there the raw materials are there but we need to have some policy long term policies that will support the sri lankan exporters mm-hmm. so there are many problems they face and uh, they have been overcoming all these things at a cost and they have been resilient but with the proper support coming in from the top i think they could do better Hmm. I actually I wanted to pop this question in to my previous question so I will ask this now. Uh, I was talking about traditional exports like tea, rubber, uh, swan and so forth. Do you see any new markets heading into the industry in terms of uh, fresh faces, fresh uh, innovative ideas uh, and fresh uh, sort of companies with different ideas coming into the scene? We we'll see the ICT BPO industry has a potential of growing up to about 5 billion now they are at a very very low level there a lot of talent in terms of the it industry and then then you look at the uh, gems and jewelry industry they were also hit by various policies that was introduced and uh, you know they were discouraged they had they were facing a lot of issues that is a sector that can really go up i think in my personal view the it i the it sector should be looked at very very positively uh, you know a couple of years ago there was something called the national export strategy that was prepared with the support of organization called international trade center geneva it's funded by the world bank there are thousands of us got together industry experts and we put together something called the national export strategy we didn't have export strategy after all this work was done and we identified around six sectors there one of those was the ict sector there a lot of potential we saw in that sector when the government changed that policy was thrown away mm. so today we don't have a proper national export strategy and i think that is very important and we are talking with the present government to bring that back of course there is some amendments and modifications that are needed so to answer your question we need to get in to, into innovation there are a lot of talent here we need to add value to our products and we need to increase our product basket 
it, depending on our traditional exports, no, no, no that will, I don't think uh, that is the way forward. Uh, we need to add products into our, we need to do a lot of innovation and value addition. You said if we embrace uh, this, the IT sector, we could reach around 5 billion. 5 billion dollars, yes. So, if we are talking about reaching this sector, what are we sort of looking at if the IT industry sort of steps in and uh, ups their game? What will the export industry look like? What is, what is the work that will be done by the IT sector? No, I mean, I'm talking about uh, these are, you know, softwares and various services yeah. that they sell to the uh, sell to overseas, country, I mean, overseas companies. Now, there are a lot of companies you can take a country like even in Europe and in, in UK, they use Sri Lankan IT talent for their HR packages, their accounting packages. Now, there are leading IT companies in Sri Lanka like 99X, uh, Senid, uh, Oral IT. I mean, you can see the wonderful work they are doing keep on innovating every time new 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 new, new services are introduced and they are you know reaching some of the top top c c companies in, in in Europe in Japan in US and we have a lot of talent here even if you look at the northern part of Sri Lanka there's so much of talent in terms of IT now what do they do they leave the country they go to Canada they are in the UK who are the top IT people in those countries working in those companies is Sri Lankan youth so why can't we, you know, harness this talent and, uh, and you know, upgrade our, 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 our IT industry? So they, that is a 5 billion US dollar industry if we, if we really focus on that. Uh, that's right. Now, as you mentioned, as soon as a government changes, everything changes. So what do you think may be a policy that could be implemented to ensure the sustainability of no change, you know, no matter who comes or no matter who goes, that uh, the industry and the sector will remain stable. Is there anything that can be done to implement some sort of policy to ensure stability? Well, that is what we are lobbying with the present government and, uh, you know, the national export strategy. If that can be revived and introduced as a strategy for the next 10 years, then the exporters will be focused. They will know what to do. They will know how to, how to engage and, you know, upskill or up, upgrade, their, upgrade their business. Because that particular document talks about what kind of diversification you need, what are the, uh, you know, uh, what you call upgrading their, upgrading their present manufacturing processes. It, it covers a gamut of, a uh, lot of areas are looked at. So if, if, a, if a strategy like this could be introduced by the, maybe the present government, that this is going to be the national export strategy for the past, for the next 10 years, then I don't think any government change will, you know, uh, try to take this away. The exporters will be focused on that, they'll start working towards that. So we need long-term policies introduced by hopefully the present government where it will not be changed again and again. That is creating a lot of frustration, confidence among the exporters. Absolutely. So we are hoping that some sort of policy will be put in place to ensure that, you know, as I There's said, no change happening. Yes, that's yes. right. So now regional involvement and cooperation is also key. Now, are there any initiatives or involvements that we are seeing at a regional level where Sri Lanka is uh, being supported? The Sri Lankan exporters are being supported, uh, particularly from neighboring markets or regional trade bodies like SAC. Yeah, but uh, see, when you talk about uh, getting the regional uh, talent on board to support the Sri Lankan export sector, I think I could refer to Sri Lanka and our regions. If you take places, even the northern region. Trincomalee, down south, the east. There are a lot of people there who are presently producing something which could become an export ready product. But to take them to that next level, there are a lot of work we need to do. Now, we as a chamber, we have a program where every month or maybe once in two months, we take a group of exporters, visit these regions, we coordinate with the regional chambers sort of an exhibition is arranged where they bring all their samples and we have seen a lot of talents we take products like handicraft there's so much of talent they do this wonderful product but packaging it branding it needs to be you know done it's not done so properly. that is where the issue is yes. packaging and branding we pa do have packaging, the product product is there but yeah. you need to maybe fine-tune it a bit so that those course. those things the leading exporters if we connect them with them they will learn all these things so there are a lot of, a lot of talent available in Sri Lanka in the regional level, 
and we as a chamber we are connecting our leading exporters with them you know where they get into buyback offers and things like this but there are a lot of lot of things could be done also to highlight there is no proper information about what is available in the region here again i am talking about a digital platform today you can let's say a fruits and vegetable exporter right he gets a additional order from a country like maldives he will not know where to source it but there are products available in the region so there should this kind of information should be fed into an online portal where mm -hmm. the exporters could you know easily extract and contact them and get these things uh, on board so here also again going digital will solve most of these problems so what does a 5 to the next 5 to 10 years what does the industry look like to you do you think we are going places or do you think we might remain stagnant well as a chamber having spoken to many of our members i think they are positive now i i i sense a note of positive i sense that there is sort of confidence building up and we are very hopeful and we feel that the next 5 years is going to be a game changer for us uh, we have to change and uh, you know we need the we need the us dollars anyway in couple of years time we have to start paying the rent and That's who right. can bring the us dollars here exporters can do a huge job if they can increase the exports by up to maybe 20 billion that will be a huge benefit for the country tourism yes it will continue to improve but not in the level of exports i think we should focus on exporters support them in terms of having like long term steady policies provide them incentives if it is possible get them to export and bring in their foreign currency so this is a industry that can grow not only bringing foreign currency it will create jobs the economy will sustain i mean the international recognition when sri lankan products products are used overseas you know they say this made in sri lanka that gives a recognition to the country so there are so many benefits that will arise from exports so i think we are very positive next few years exports will do well and uh, i think you know we need to support whoever government is in play to you know get these things done now you are a veteran in the industry as well and i believe that there are many aspiring exporters looking to break into the industry and also to break into the international markets so there are often significant barriers like financial uh, barriers marketing and regulatory compliance as well so what advice would you give someone who is looking to enter into the industry from yeah. sri lanka now we as a chamber we also have like i said this aspiring exporters program where we get startup companies and we connect them we train them we give them training on packaging on branding and also when it comes to financing which is the key thing that they really need there are many banks in sri lanka who have various programs introduced to support the export sector we yeah. are talking about low level interest are provided to them grooming coaching them they also do all these programs and i think uh, with the intervention of the central bank and now the new policies that will int be introduced by the government and we as chambers getting together to focus more on exports i think there will be more financial support provided to the sme or the aspiring exporters so we are positive that you know with this kind of uh, changes happening that we could see more export oriented companies coming into play mm -hmm. and uh, more products was added into the export basket definitely as yeah. you mentioned uh, the time will come where we will have to start paying the debt course, so that yeah. is when, uh, That's when you need all this. the industries have to play in the role but as you mentioned the export industry has a strong withstanding to sort of uh, protect us in this uh, arena because unlike tourism tourism is also a huge uh, bonus factor for the economy but if there is unfortunately uh, some incident that takes place the the industry might That's crash right. because That's that right. is what we saw with the easter bomb yes. uh, the crises uh, taking place and covid as well but yeah. the export industry is an industry which is stable just right and i think just like you said if there are a lot of areas where things like tourism can get affected yeah. right like the easter bombing but the exporters will continue especially That's our right. perishables food i mean we have a we also have we also export uh, herbal medicines uh, pharmaceuticals you know these industries will anyway survive with all this world need these products exactly so i think we need to focus on exports 
see in my view exporters bring prosperity to a nation i strongly believe that and uh, we need to work with exporters that's right because this is our local talent and if we have the talent mm -hmm. Why not make use of it? Of course, that's and correct. And instead of allowing our people to go looking for greener pastures, it's time that we create these greener that's pastures right. here. But I believe that uh, so far we are seeing some progress here in the country. So we are hoping uh, that the next five to ten years will also be beaming with hope for all of us. Yes. So on that note, I would like to invite you to give us some closing remarks and some words of wisdom to end this discussion. Well, I think uh, moving forward, we need to be uh, looking things at a very positive manner. We have to have confidence in the new government. We need to work with them and uh, support them and uh, make sure that the proper policies are introduced. We need to lobby with the government and we hope that there will be a lot of public-private partnerships in discussions when they are introducing these kind of policies. And this is a game where all of us have to hold hands and play together. And like I said, exporters bring prosperity to the nation. So let's support them. That's right. And on that note, it is important to say that leaving is sometimes definitely not the answer. It's better to stay back here and collectively fight together for a better nation, for better prosperity and for a better Sri Lanka. And on that note, we conclude our discussion for today. I was in conversation with Mr. Shri Amarika, the Secretary General and CEO of the National Chamber of Exporters here in Sri Lanka. Thank you for joining us and wishing you and the Chambers nothing but the best for all your future endeavours. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. On that note, we conclude for today. Join us again next week for a story that will ignite change. Until we meet again, stay safe and have a pleasant night.